going on, everybody? It is April 3rd. We've got a ridiculous Tuesday NBA slate. I've already forgotten how many times I've counted these. 13 games coming off of a, a night of no NBA DFS, which was absolutely perfect for me, uh, considering I got a root canal yesterday morning at like 9 o'clock. So couldn't have asked for a better scenario of having a day off of NBA. Um, we were also off on Sunday for Easter, so what we're being rewarded with is just a bonker slate. Uh, I know this is a little bit later than it's normally coming out. Uh, that won't be the case moving forward. I was just a little slow getting started today. Uh, normally this will be out at its usual early morning time, but we did be get a chance to work in a little bit of extra news. <clears throat> if you have any interest in any MLB information, uh, myself and fellow awesomeo.com writer Jake Hari uh, put in like a 90 minute shift uh, breaking down the main slate. Um, so that is up on the awesomeo.com uh, YouTube channel. I highly recommend you guys go check that out. But for now, let's dive into all of this ridiculous NBA nonsense. First game on the board, starting with a potential Eastern Conference Finals preview, Cavs hosting the Toronto Raptors. Cavs with a 112.25 implied total, which is third. They are a point and a half favorites at home against the Raptors. Uh, George Hill already scratched. Kyle Korver is in. Um, if we're taking a look at this, uh, Cavs, very difficult matchup um, at shooting guard, small forward, power forward. Uh, Toronto just good defensively. We're really only, in my opinion, I'm only really looking at LeBron. Um, 12 5 on FanDuel, 12,000 on DK. I have a hard time uh, paying that freight against the Raptors. Not sure how much Cleveland's going to even care here. Um, you know, obviously they want to win. That's not the direction I'm going, but I don't expect them to uh, break out any interesting wrinkles when they know that they'll likely have to see the Raptors. Uh, at some point in time in the Eastern Conference playoffs. Um, if you want to look at LeBron, it's okay, but he's not a, a guy that I'm going to be focused on. I don't expect him to grade out well uh, when I run the optimizer. And then after that, um, I don't really have much interest in Kevin Love, and I don't think that uh, any sort of value is created with George Hill being out. Um, you can take a flyer on Jordan Clarkson if you'd like. That's about the extent of it for me. Uh, I'm going to try to go through this a little bit quicker than I normally would with the amount of games on this slate. Um, to talk about every one of them in depth uh, would be painful for every one of you trying to watch this. Of course I didn't refresh this sheet before I started. Why would I? Raptors, 110.75 implied total is fifth. They obviously have an exceptional matchup. The best against small forwards and power forwards recently, so... Uh, that is something to keep in mind. Uh, Toronto with a much better matchup for point guards than shooting guards, um, which leads me to like Kyle Lowry uh, quite a bit. 7,900 on FanDuel, 8,400 on DK, not as advantageous. Um, but Kyle Lowry is definitely someone that I would want to have a part of here. Uh, I think that his ownership will be pretty nice on my end. I'll be relatively muted on DeRozan, uh, 8,500 price point is not a place that I want to land. Um, I, I would much prefer Lowry at a, a $600 discount, comparatively speaking. On DraftKings, I think that DeRozan is a little bit more playable, 7,600 there, whereas Lowry is uh, 8,400, not the best price. So if you want to flip-flop them, you can. I'd probably avoid both on DK, and I would focus mostly on Lowry on FanDuel. Uh, other than that, I think you're just trying to force in, you know, Ibaka or Van Vliet. Um, Ibaka in particular, I think, could be an interesting uh, GPP play uh, with the the Cavs being so porous against fours. Um, but Lowry is my main focus here. Philly hosting the Brooklyn Nets. Sixers eight and a half point favorites at home. Uh, they have the number one implied total on the entire slate, uh, which is really interesting to see, particularly with Embiid out. Um, great matchup for the Sixers. <clears throat> Everything but shooting guard is is stacked, and uh, 
point guard and center are both the number one um, options on the entire day. Ben Simmons, 9,900 on FanDuel, 9,600 on DK. Uh, coming off a 66-point game on, um, on April 1st. Uh, very nice performance there. I like Simmons a little bit. I like him more than I normally do just because of the matchup. He's someone I'll have a small amount of, but I still think that uh, it's hard for me to get to him at that price. Um, he doesn't grade out as well in my ratings. Uh, Bobby Covington, I think, is in a nice spot here. 6,100 on FanDuel, 6,000 on DK. Went for 54.7 in his last time out uh, with no Embiid and no Saric. Keep in mind, uh, both of those guys uh, not likely to play here today, so I'd be okay having some Covington. Um, you know, I think Amir Johnson is an all right punt play, but now that his price is up to 4,600, I wouldn't go too wild. 3,800 on DK is a little bit more palatable, especially when you can fit in more than one center. Um, if you want to take a flyer on Redick or Bellinelli, go ahead. It's not my favorite spot, but with all the extra minutes to go around, uh, Bellinelli at 4,200 on FanDuel, 4,200 on DK would be a direction that I would want to go. I'll likely have a decent amount of Sixers scattered through uh, my lineups. Nobody standing out as exceptional, but I think that uh, a lot of it looks fine. Brooklyn, a uh, similar situation uh, to Cleveland. Very difficult matchup. Um, Philly, amazing across the board defensively. Um, I don't, I'm not necessarily afraid of not having Embiid out there. Nets 107.25 implied total is 12th, so they're a bit more porous defensively, but it's still not anything that I'm terribly worried about. Uh, if I'm grabbing anybody from Brooklyn, it's probably Damari Carroll on FanDuel. 5,500. Uh, hasn't had the best, uh, most recent two games, but was in the thir mid 30s, the two previous games, and at 5,500, I'm willing to take that chance. Um, Rondé Hollis Jefferson at 7,500. I just don't love at that price point uh, or this matchup. Um, so if I'm looking at anything here, it's Carroll, uh, maybe little bits of Russell or Crab if he plays. Uh, but I just don't really like Brooklyn against Philly. Miami Heat, uh, 109.75 implied total, which is eighth. They're 11.5 point favorites at home against the Atlanta Hawks. Uh, really nice matchup for the Heat, particularly at uh, point guard and small forward. Um, if we look at someone like Goran Dragic, 6,800 on FanDuel, 7,200 on DK. I think he looks like a very nice uh, point guard play on FanDuel. I'd be a little bit more muted uh, at that price point on DraftKings. Josh Richardson at 6,400 uh, is, is totally fine with me. He should have no problem grabbing the minutes there. Um, and with Miami being the third best matchup against small forwards, Richardson is someone I would want to take a look at. Um, I think Tyler Johnson is an interesting value play on DraftKings at 4,100. Uh, if he gets that big minutes chunk, um, or if you know he gets up in the 28-29 range, I think that um, you could be very happy. I'm projecting him for 26 because he bounces so much between high minutes and mid-tier minutes. Uh, so if you get him on the right night with the right minutes, and I think this might be that particular matchup uh, against the Hawks, I think that Tyler Johnson could be a nice sleeper play. But I don't really have much of an issue having anybody from Miami. There's nobody that I'm overly seeking out um, just because the Hawks are so bad. Uh, but nobody looks like a complete stay away except for maybe Kelly Olenek whose price is still um, inflated from all of the extra minutes he was getting about a week ago. Now if we look at the Hawks, Hawks 98.25 implied total is 26th. Uh, that is an important number to know because 26th is the worst implied total on the entire slate. Um, difficult matchup going up against the Heat. If you're playing anybody here, uh, I would probably just stick to the lower salaried guys. Maybe Damian Lee, although his minutes were shaved a little bit um, on Sunday. Yeah, Sunday. 
So I could, you can talk me into a little bit of Lee, Deadman, or Collins on FanDuel. Maybe a little bit of Mascala. But ultimately, I don't really want a ton from Atlanta. They're bad. They have the worst implied total on the entire board. Uh, Miami is good defensively. They've just got a lot going against them. So I'd rather find my value elsewhere. Now... It's hard to really get too excited about this game. Uh, Knicks hosting the Magic. 105.75 implied total for the Knicks. They are one and a half point favorites at home. Um, You know, uh, the Knicks aren't very good. And neither is Orlando. But we're not expecting to see Cantor out there today. And if that means extra minutes for Kyle O'Quinn, 5,500 on FanDuel, 5,100 on DK. uh, He'll be one of the, the better plays on the board. Um, no problem having a ton of Kyle Quinn, and I expect to have a lot of him. I think it's perfectly reasonable to have some Tim Hardaway, some Beasley, or some Trey Burke. Uh, I would be relatively muted in most of that, um, but these are guys that are getting minutes, and sometimes that's really all you need. That's about as far down as I would go. Um, if you want to take a flyer on the Unicornet on FanDuel, uh, I, I wouldn't do it, but I could see a scenario where you would want to. For me, though, uh, O'Quinn is the priority, and then um, I'll have a, a very solid amount of Burke, Hardaway, and Beasley. And I would prioritize them the same way that I said it, Burke, Hardaway, Beasley. Now for the Magic, uh, 104.25 implied total is 19th. Um, one and a half point underdogs in New York. For me, Aaron Gordon is probably the only guy I would want to take a look at. DJ Augustin, I guess, is fine at 5,500 on FanDuel. He's been getting heavy minutes, can get into the 30s, so I don't have a problem there. Um, Knicks have been pretty stingy against point guards, so be aware of that. I think Gordon at 8,100, though, just has the opportunity to have a big game, uh, more so than anybody else on... uh, on the magic if there was a better center matchup uh, Knicks have been one of the best teams again for center defense recently uh, I would be a little bit more interested in Vooch but I think having Cantor off and all of those minutes going to O'Quinn um, makes it even more difficult so the only guy I totally want to pay attention to is Gordon um, Maybe a little bit of Augustine, but other than that, Gordon is just my guy. Bulls, 105.75 implied total is uh, 15th. They are four and a half point underdogs at home against the Hornets. Um, we should see Markin in here. Still no Dunn, uh, no Levine, no real interesting plays here. Uh, Hornets defense is still very solid. Um, no Batum tonight, so it's a little bit less solid. But I think the top two guys that are on this list are probably the only two guys that I want to look at at all. And that would be Cam Payne at 4,900 on FanDuel. And even with this trim of minutes lately, I, I think that he could be worth a flyer in a GPP. But Markinen at 5,200 on FanDuel is someone that I definitely want to take a look at. Last two games, he's only played 25 minutes, um, but he was able to hit 29 fantasy points and 31 fantasy points, both of which are, you know, 6x value numbers or close to it. Uh, I think marketing can have a big game in in some muted minutes. Other than that, uh, you don't want bulls. They're too tanky. Hornets, 6th highest implied total. Uh, Exceptional matchup against the bulls' poorest D. You've got Jeremy Lamb, um, 33 projected minutes, 6,000 salary on FanDuel, 5,200 on DK. Uh, Should get a very nice allotment of minutes with Batum out, Bacon out, Travion Graham out. Uh, Lamb and MKG are going to get a ton of wing minutes. I like both of those guys in either format. Um, I like Kemba at 8,100 on FanDuel. Uh, You can talk me into Malik Monk. 3,600 on FanDuel, 3,900 on DK. Uh, Lots to like here for the Hornets um, with all of those wing guys out. Uh, They're going to have a ton of minutes to go around, 
and um, guys like Monk, Lamb, MKG, they're going to soak them all up. So Hornets guys are in a really nice spot uh, for a DFS today. For a DFS today. What does that sentence even mean? Guys, I'm a little rusty. It's been, you know, I did 90 minutes on baseball. Didn't talk at all yesterday. Didn't talk at all on Sunday. Gotta get back in the groove. I'm just making up sentences. None of this shit makes sense. Look, play a bunch of Hornets. They're in a great spot. Just trust me. Rockets. Hosting the Wizards. 111 implied total for the Rockets. They're eight-point favorites at home against the Wiz. Fourth highest implied total for the Rockets. I expect them to be at uh, full capacity tonight, but, you know, wouldn't be crazy to see Chris Paul sit here. Missed the last two games. Um, if we know that he's in, James Harden at 11,000 on FanDuel, I think looks great. Uh, I'd, be, I'd be more than okay having him at that price point. Um, 11.7 on DK is probably more than I would want to pay. Um, I don't really love much of the Rockets here, though. Uh, Chris Paul at 200 is not something I'm really looking for in a situation where he might be limited. Um, their best positions are small forward and power forward from a matchup perspective. So you can take a flyer on Trevor Ariza. I don't really ever get him right. I'm never on him when he hits that 46-point game like he did on March 27th. So for me, my only focus is Harden. Um, I could end up with a teeny amount of Capella or Ariza, but that's not a direction I like going. Um, Harden is really it for me. Now for the Wizards, who definitely want this game. Uh, 103 implied total is 22nd. Eight-point underdogs in Houston. Not the worst matchup in the world. We should see John Wall at relative full capacity. 8,000 on FanDuel, 7,500 on DK. I actually like the idea of having Wall here. Um, game doesn't mean as much to Houston, so I, I could definitely see a scenario where Wall's trying to get back into his flow, maybe gunning a little bit more. Um, not as interested in Beal, uh, but at 7,200 on DK, I would be willing to take a closer look. I think Markeith Morris is probably in play on FanDuel. But all in all, I think it's really just sort of Wall, very mild amounts of Beal. But Wall is really the only guy that I think is in play. Uh, Otto Porter's salary is still, in my opinion, too high now that Wall is back. Um, now, don't get me wrong, Porter went for 51 with Wall back um, on Saturday. So it can happen, but that's just not a place where I want to pay up. Brewers, yeah, Brewers, god damn. It's just, it's bum, 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 bad. Russell, Russell Wilson playing tonight, too. Am I going to get back into that? Milwaukee Bucks hosting the Boston Celtics. 104.75 implied total is 18th on the day. Bucks, two point favorites against the Celtics at home. Um, we've got Giannis at 11 2 on FanDuel, 10 8 on DK. Uh, no issues having. Giannis. I like him significantly more than I like LeBron tonight. That 11-2 price point is just better. 10-8 on DK, just better. Um, I'm not as worried about Boston from a defensive standpoint right now. I think that you can get yourself to Middleton and Bledsoe and be fine. Uh, both guys under 8,000 on FanDuel. Uh, Middleton up to 8,000 on DK. I don't like Middleton and Bledsoe as much on DraftKings. Both guys having prices above their FanDuel price is uh, usually pretty tricky to get to. And then uh, Henson at 4,900. Um, this is a guy that put up 31 on uh, on April 1st. Uh, at 4,900 for their starting center, or you know, a guy that's going to get at least a decent run of minutes. No problem going there. Henson looks like a nice value on FanDuel. Uh, just getting a bunch of tweets about wondering where the NBA video is. It's coming, people. You don't know that right now, but it's coming. I can't respond to you. Let's look at Boston. Celtics, uh, 102.75 implied total is 23rd. Uh, again, you know, like, pricing just isn't the best. There's not a ton of value out of here on most of these teams. Uh, Bucks are, you know, relatively average in defensive matchups here. The only guy that get, grades out a little bit better would be Al Horford. 
Horford at 7,000 on FanDuel, 6,400 on DK. Uh, Horford went for 45 on March 26th. That would be a really nice um, output at this current price point. Um, Horford is someone that I'll definitely take a look at. After that, I mean, you're looking at, like, I don't know, maybe Jalen Brown a little bit, maybe Terry Rozier a little bit. But the only guy that I really want to focus on would probably be Horford. Um, you know, if you want to take a flyer on Baines at 3,700, I would understand it, but I don't think it's a great play. Uh, I would just focus on Horford. Oklahoma City Thunder hosting the Golden State Warriors. Thunder, uh, four and a half point favorites at home. Uh, They have the second highest implied total at 113. And, uh... You know, okay matchup. Um, we've got basically five guys to look at, and that's it. Uh, George Westbrook, Adams, Mello, and Brewer. Uh, for me, George at 8,100, 7,700 on DK is a guy that I would want to focus on. I think that's a really nice price. Went for 47.6 on uh, on April 1st, which is not foolish at all. Terrible joke. Not even really a joke. I just, I'm just I'm ashamed of myself for that one. <laughs> uh, but yeah, roster Paul George, roster Russell Westbrook, eleven seven on FanDuel, eleven eight on DK. No problems there. Went for sixty two on April first, seventy on March thirtieth. Um, those are all perfectly acceptable performances uh, for Russ. Uh, Oklahoma City needs this game more than a little bit, um, and I definitely like Russ here to to try to take some of the shine. Um, Adams at 7,200, 6,900 on DK. Not a spot that I really totally love him, but I don't mind that price, so I don't mind a little bit of flyer on Steven Adams. Uh, Mello went for 39 on Saturday, which is a very nice Mello game. Um, they don't You don't get those too often. I don't like that $5,700 price point, though. Uh, I'll have a very mild amount of Mello when all is said and done. And then Corey Brewer, 4,800, 4,600 on DK. Uh, I think the bloom is off the rose a little bit now. He's settling into what he's supposed to be. Um, he's not a guy that I want to have much of. So my focus here would be having a bunch of uh, Paul George and Russell Westbrook. For the Warriors now, um, 108.5 implied total is 10th. Uh, they are 4.5 point underdogs in Oklahoma City. We should have Draymond, Durant, and Clay, but no Steph. Um, I don't want Quinn Cook in this scenario, although he did put up 39.8 fantasy points on Sunday. Uh, I just, it's not a direction I want to go. Golden State, or Oklahoma City's been solid against point guard defense, and I just don't think Quinn Cook's going to be in a situation to really go crazy tonight. I think Draymond is probably too expensive for me at 8,800. The one guy that I would want to look at is Durant. Um, 10-7 on FanDuel, 11-2 on DK. The pricing is perfect. You know, he went for 59 on on April 1st, so on Sunday. And now he's got to go back to Oklahoma City. He's going to want to get his, I think. And at that price point, you got to take that shot. He's one of the better plays on the board, in my opinion. And Clay at 6,400. You know, you, you take a shot at him in a GPP because he can go on a heater. Um, it's just, he plays rarely for me. He doesn't look for his own enough. Yeah, coffee sip here. There's a little, there's a little slurp for everybody. Uh, Mavs hosting the Portland Trailblazers. This is not... Uh, fully updated. Right as I clicked record, I noticed on Twitter um, that Nerlens Noel has been suspended five games for violations of the substance abuse policy, as has uh, Tabo Cephalosha. So Nerlens Noel is done for the year. Um, I guess I could probably update this, but it's not really going to matter all that much. Uh, the only guy that I like is really Harrison Barnes. I don't think that anybody comes really into play, except for maybe Dwight Powell on FanDuel. Um, 
But New Orleans Noel is certainly not going to be getting 19 minutes tonight. Give some of those minutes to, to Maxi and to Powell. Um, uh, maybe Salah Mejri. Uh, but it's not changing anything for me. I don't really want anybody from Dallas here. A real difficult matchup. You know, eight and a half point underdogs at home. Second or third worst implied total in the night. If you want a little bit of Harrison Barnes, go ahead. Otherwise, Dallas is basically a full fade for me. Uh, but the Blazers, on the other hand, uh, 108.25 implied total is 11th. Eight and a half point favorites at home or on the road against Dallas. Um, not the worst matchup in the world. Who's texting me? Oh, my dentist. Yeah, my experience was great. Sort of. Uh, 9,700 for Lillard, 9,000 on DK. Hard not to love him here. Uh, not a bad matchup for point guards. You know, Dennis Smith is not someone that's going to be putting Lillard uh, in check. So definitely like a lot of Dame Lillard tonight has a ton of upside. You know, Portland's still gunning hard. Um, I'm not as big of a fan of CJ at 7,700, but I don't have a problem with it. He's been uh, in the mid-40s in five of his last seven games, so no issues there. Uh, I think Nurkic looks pretty nice on DK at 7,100. Um, no, Noel makes that even more appealing. So for me, very big focus on Lillard. Uh, if I were playing on DK, I would want to take a closer look at Nurkic and McCollum. Uh, on FanDuel, I don't really love either of them as much, particularly Nurkic. At 8,400, I probably won't have much of any. Uh, Lillard is the main key here. Nuggets hosting the Pacers. 109.5 implied total for Denver is ninth. They are 3.5 point favorites at home uh, against the Pacers, and they desperately need this one. Um, if I open up 538 NBA projections... What are Denver's chances of making the playoffs right now? 33% chance to make the playoffs. Um, they are currently sitting ninth. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, nine. So uh, desperately need this game. Um, and it's a, it's a tough matchup. The only real spot they have any sort of value would be at the shooting guard uh, position. So Jamal Murray at 7,500, 6,500 on DK. Um, if I were playing Murray, it would be likely on DK only. Very minimal amount of Murray on FanDuel. Uh, I feel the same way about Barton. Uh, I would prefer him dramatically on DK. I would prefer basically the entire team on DK compared to FanDuel. Uh, I'll have some Barton on FanDuel. Went for 63 his last time out. No, he didn't. That was Jokic. Jokic went for 63 his last time out. 56 the game before that. 66 the game before that. Um, I wouldn't have a single issue running out Jokic tonight, particularly on DK. But I think the best play on the board for the Nuggets is Will Barton. Just from a matchup standpoint, um, he's been quiet lately, which uh, gives me the he's due factor that everybody's usually looking for. Um but I'll have an okay amount of Jokic on FanDuel. I just don't really like that 10-7 price point against Indiana, at least. Um, so Barton is my focus. I'll have a little bit of Murray and Millsap. Very little Chandler. And uh, Jokic, I'll have trouble getting to with the amount of centers that are on the board. But I like Barton a lot tonight. Indiana. Uh, 106 implied total is 13th. Obviously, Pacers, huge game for the Pacers as well from a seeding perspective. They're still trying to jockey with the Cavs and Sixers uh, for position and to stay ahead of uh, the rest of the teams they're in front of. Um, Oladipo at 8,900, 9,200 on DK. Uh, I'm perfectly okay with it. Indiana's got a really nice matchup here, so I'm cool with having some Oladipo. Uh, I'm very cool with having some Miles Turner, particularly on DK. Um, you know, maybe a little bit of Thad on FanDuel is would be appealing as well. Uh, I like Indiana more than Denver here. Um, I think they just have better pricing, at least on FanDuel. Um, on DK, 
you know, you can go Collis and Turner or Oladipo, in my opinion, and be pretty happy. This one's a rough one. Utah hosting the Lakers, uh, 11 and a half point favorites. Jazz at home, a 110 implied total is seventh. Uh, great matchup for the Jazz. Lakers defense is nothing to write home about. Um, I think that Donovan Mitchell looks great, 8100 on FanDuel, 7600 on DK. Uh, he's definitely someone I want to take a look at. Um, 46 fantasy points on March 22nd, 52 on March 23rd. Um, generally, you know, in the, the low 30s, but I think that a game against the Lakers is the type of game that will benefit him the most. Gobert at 8,800, uh, 7,500 on DK. It's just hard to get away from Gobert at that price point. Quiet in his last three and in four of five, I think um, feasting on the Lakers could be a cure for what ails him. Uh, Rubio on DK at 6,800 is someone that I think you can't help but focus on. Uh, went for 41 in 27 minutes on Sunday. Multiple 40-point games um, recently in this last two-week stretch. I can't see avoiding him on DK. And then you've got guys like uh, you know, Derek Favors, who I think could be an interesting value play against the Lakers. Um, you know, if Favors is matching up at all on Julius Randle, I think that he can handle him pretty well defensively. So... I think the Favors is a bit too crafty on the other end for him. Favors could be an interesting sleeper play. Lakers, though, are a morgue, man. They just don't have healthy bodies. Uh, 98.5 implied total is 25th. They're going to struggle here. Um, Jazz defense, obviously exceptional. I don't really want to go too much into KCP. I think that Kuzma on FanDuel at 6,500 is very playable. Uh really nice value there but i can't get too crazy about julius randall at 8200 uh josh hart at 4500 is a bit too pricey for me even if he does get a bunch of minutes um i don't really want to pay for alex caruso at min salary on fanduel i still don't even really see any value there uh, lakers are just in some trouble here it's it's kuzma and that's about it uh, as far as i'm concerned Final two games. Boy, they are doozies. The Phoenix Suns hosting the Sacramento Kings. Suns are so bad, they're actually one-point underdogs at home against the Kings. I've got Booker in. Who knows if that actually happens. Don't expect to see TJ Warren. Don't expect to see good basketball. This game is dog shit. Um, it's going to be an embarrassment to basketball. Uh, please don't watch this game. Please don't expect anything good here. Uh, if you want to have, if Devin Booker plays, I think he's fine to roster. I think Josh Jackson is fine regardless. And uh, I think Marquise Chris looks really nice <clears throat> at 5,200 on FanDuel. Uh, he's gone 36, 37, 40 in his last three. Those are exceptional games at this $5,200 price point. No reason he can't keep that going against the hapless Kings. Um, but don't get your hopes up on anything here. Uh, you can be let down very easily. Wouldn't shock me if they gave Alec Peters 35 minutes or Shaq Harrison. It's just nobody's good. And if Booker sits, nobody's really good on the Suns. For the Kings, uh, most of what I just said is going to be similar. It's a decent matchup. Kings actually favored by a point in Phoenix. 17th highest implied total. Uh, I'd be looking at Bogdan, if anything, 4600 on FanDuel is an exceptional price for a guy that plays 30, close to 30 minutes. But again, you've got to balance an overwhelmingly large roster of guys. They played 11 guys on Sunday, 11 guys on Saturday. Um, they're spreading the minutes out all over the place, so it's hard to really commit to anyone. Um, I think that Bogdan is really the only guy that you can make a, a nice high upside play on. Although I think De'Aaron Fox at 4,800, 5,000 on DK is the other flyer that I'd be willing to take. Uh, just from a price perspective, um, as a guy that would want to, would have a little bit to prove, something to prove, particularly against a Suns team that sucks. So Bogdan and Fox are the only guys. Um, just try to avoid this game in its entirety. Like it's 10 o'clock, just. If you're on the East Coast, just go to sleep instead. Final game. 
Clippers hosting the Spurs. Uh, Clippers with a 103.75 implied total, 21st. They are one and a half point underdogs at home against the Spurs. Um, this could be the last sort of real game for the Clippers. Very little chance to make the playoffs at this point. 18%. They're behind the Nuggets. They would still need to catch the Nuggets and the Pelicans at least. Um, or the Timberwolves, I guess. Um, Spurs also still playing for seeding. Uh, if the Clippers drop this one, they're going to be in some trouble. So it's one sort of reason to focus on them a little bit. Uh, I don't really love Austin Rivers, but at 5,800 and 5,300 on DK, I think he's worth a look in GPPs where he has uh, gone up to 38 fantasy points in two of his last three. Um, I'm less enthused about someone like Tobias Harris. Lou Will, 6,700 on FanDuel is, you know, as per usual, someone that I'll, I'll send a you know, take a nice shot at, went for 45 on March 25th. That's the sort of uh, production you're looking for from Lou Will at that price point. Um, and then DeAndre, not a guy I really love against um, the Spurs. 7200 is not a bad price. Uh, I wouldn't pay the $8,200 freight for him at DK. Uh, but my main focus here would be on Rivers and on Lou Will on FanDuel. And finally, we look at the Spurs. Um, Spurs, 105.25 implied total, one and a half point favorites in LA, uh, 16th highest implied total. It's a pretty decent matchup for them. Uh, we've got Aldridge at 9,400 on FanDuel, 8,900 on DK. You know, four ga- three games in the 50s, a game at 66 in this last uh, two week stretch for Aldridge. I just have a lot of trouble paying up that much freight for him. Um, 9400 is a lot on FanDuel. Even if he gets to that 50-point number, there's not a ton of upside above it. And you're going to need all the upside you can get on uh, a slate this gigantic. So I'm fine with Aldridge. I think he looks really nice in a cash scenario. I wouldn't go too crazy in a GPP. Um, GPP, I'd be interested in... Patty Mills at 4,400. It's a guy that got, you know, 30 fantasy points twice in the past two weeks. Uh, That's a nice return on $4,400 investment. Um, DeJounte Murray at 6,000 is interesting. Uh, Only in GPPs. He can go crazy. Uh, I wouldn't expect that. And then uh, Rudy Gay, 4,100 on FanDuel. 4500 on DK. It looks really nice for 4100 on FanDuel. Um, went for 33 on uh, on Easter. Um, that's just sort of an idea of where that upside can be. Um, four straight games before that in the tw- low 20s, so he was right at value. Uh, I think that he's got a really high floor if that's something that you're looking for. Oh boy, I went through it quick because I don't really have much choice. But let's throw this stuff into uh, Fantasy Cruncher and we'll see what gets spit out. Um, on a day like today with so many games, uh, ownership is gonna be spread quite thin. So I'm anxious to see how this looks. Ooh, I'm fading out here a little bit. Interesting. For some reason, this Logitech camera that I use uh, the gain and the exposure like move even when you're not using it. So like I have to change the settings every day and apparently it's just a bug that never gets fixed. So I'm slowly but surely losing the gain here. If I look over here, I can probably fix that even though there's no need at the end of this video at this point, but why not? Yeah, gain all the way down, exposure all the way up, perfect. It's probably like that the whole damn time, too. What do I know? Alrighty, advanced options. Let's add in some randomness. And let's see what we get in the top 100 lineups here. This should be... There's going to be a lot of weirdness, I think. That's an overwhelming amount of uh, Amir Johnson and Damian Lee. That's for sure. A lot of rust, though, and I'm okay with that. So if I were going to be looking at one lineup right now, um, 
I think that I would probably grab Lamb and MKG right out of the gate and pay up at other positions. I really like that combination of guys. Um, 9,800 total salary there. So if we just say that it's 10, we need fit. We want 50 plus out of them, and likely you know 60 would be what we were looking for. I don't see any issues with that whatsoever. Um, with the amount of minutes those guys are going to be looking to get. If I grab Marquise Chris, I'm pretty much going to have to grab O'Quinn. So that leaves me seven lineups, which is perfect because it lets my little head fit right in this spot. Um, that's the only Lou Will line, and I'd be more than okay with that. Russ, Wall, Lou Will... Donovan Mitchell, Lamb and MKG, Chris, Amir, and Kyle O'Quinn. Uh, I would like that lineup a lot in like a single entry GPP. would be a direction I would go. If we take a look at DK now. I've missed basketball. March has been fun. I just, I don't want it to go away, but I would really like it if some of these games just didn't suck as bad as they do. This one should look uh, dramatically different based on some of this weird-ass pricing that we've seen. So let's bump up the randomness. 10%. We'll see where we end up here. Stop. We want that to be each. Let's try that again. Now nah, we're cooking. Shock, shock, shock. A lot of Lamb, Amir Johnson, Kyle O'Quinn. A lot of Gobert. You know, we've got a bunch of straight A's. Gobert, Mitchell, Rubio, Lamb, O'Quinn, Amir Johnson. Um, really digging the jazz on DraftKings tonight. Stack up those jazz. All right, there's a hundred. Let's check it out. So I'm gonna start with Rubio <clears throat> because of that price, and then I definitely want to grab Jeremy Lamb. Uh, I think Amir Johnson at that price point is great. So we're down. We're at 34 now. Uh, biggest stud to pay up for, in my opinion, would be Russ, but he doesn't seem to be showing up too, too much. It looks like we're going down a bit further. Um, so I'll look at John Wall at 7,500, which I think would be nice. And then um, Kyle O'Quinn as well. That gets me to seven lineups again. Perfect. All right, no Russ in any of these that I see right off the top of my head. Um, so I'd avoid all three of, uh, the Jazz guys. I would probably only want to do two, and I think Rubio and Gobert probably look a little bit better. So what I would need to do is only one lineup with, uh, Mitchell anyway. Um, I mean, I like this a lot. Wall, Lamb, George, Amir... Gobert, Rubio, Kyle O'Quinn, Horford is probably my favorite of anything that I see on here. Um, yeah, it's either this one or uh, instead of George and Horford, it would be MKG and Jokic. I would go either direction on that would be fine. But that's it, guys. I know I went through it a little bit quick, but uh, there's just not enough time to hit on 13 games worth of stuff, particularly in the middle of the day. So um, if you like this video, please like and subscribe for the channel. We are trying to make it grow as much as we can. Uh, NBA content will usually be out a little bit earlier. Still fighting myself back from that root canal yesterday. Um, check out awesomeo.com for uh, FanDuel and DraftKings rankings, slam dunk picks from uh, Alex himself. Um, follow me on Twitter at Josh Engelman if you want any um, if you have any questions feel free to reach out I'm happy to check here or in the comments or on Twitter or wherever um, but yeah, that's all I got guys best of luck tonight and uh, I'll see you guys in the morning